Welcome. My name is Dr. Ron Carney, and I serve as the Division Chief of Head and Neck Oncologic Surgery here at UT Houston, McGovern School of Medicine, and at Memorial Hermann in the Texas Medical Center. Today I'm going to chat a little bit with you about thyroid nodules uh, from the beginning uh, through and into some of the treatment. Um, thyroid nodules are often discovered by accident. Maybe a patient has a chest CT scan for something going on in the lungs. Um, or some other kind of x-ray of the spine. Um, and then sometimes people discover a thyroid nodule because they feel a lump, usually in the bottom part of their central neck. If that happens, they'll often be referred to their primary care doctor or any physician who might, in that situation, order a thyroid ultrasound. And a thyroid ultrasound is always the first appropriate step in the workup of a thyroid nodule. The thyroid ultrasound is a way to image and see uh, the size uh, of the thyroid gland and also the size and echo, echo characteristics or ultrasound characteristics of the nodules inside the thyroid gland. And there can certainly be one nodule or multiple nodules in the thyroid gland. These uh, nodules will be evaluated by the person performing the ultrasound, not just for their size and shape, but also for other characteristics, uh, including things like microcalcifications, which could increase the risk that a nodule is a cancer. The thyroid ultrasound alone doesn't tell us if something is a worrisome nodule or not. Uh, we need to learn more about the patient and the nodule before making that decision. The other important part of the workup of a thyroid nodule is a blood test to determine if the patient's blood thyroid levels are normal. That's called a TSH, and the TSH, along with other blood tests, can tell us if the thyroid hormone levels in the bloodstream are normal. And while that's important in the workup of a thyroid nodule, sometimes it can be a bit of an irrelevant data point, meaning that you can have low thyroid levels and have a benign thyroid nodule. You can have low thyroid levels and have a cancer thyroid nodule. And the opposite is also true. You can have overactive thyroid and have a benign thyroid nodule or overactive thyroid and have a cancer thyroid nodule. So while those thyroid levels are important, they're not always part of the thyroid nodule story. And it's important to recognize that both of those data points are important, the thyroid levels and the ultrasound. Once the ultrasound is done and the thyroid levels are done, you'll usually be referred to a specialist. Typically, that would be an endocrinologist, which is a hormone specialist, or an ENT, or somebody else who regularly treats thyroid nodules, often a thyroid surgeon. In that situation, there'll be a decision to be made about whether the thyroid nodule warrants a needle biopsy. Not every thyroid nodule needs a needle biopsy. And it's a bit complicated to describe all the different situations, but suffice it to say, in general, if your thyroid nodule is over a centimeter, it'll probably warrant a needle biopsy. Some of the things that might change that would be the characteristics inside the nodule. If the nodule has very benign looking characteristics, we might watch it even until it's two centimeters. On the other hand, if the patient has high risk factors for thyroid cancer, for instance, a strong family history of thyroid cancer or exposure to radiation in their past, um, we might be more inclined to needle biopsy something even if it's small. In general, it's hard to needle biopsy things under about seven or even five millimeters because the tip of the typical needle is about four millimeters in and of itself, and it could lead to a false diagnosis, whether it's true uh, or not. It could be false. It could be a needle passed into the wrong space and not really diagnostic of what's going on in the nodule. This is an important data point because a lot of folks want thyroid nodules biopsied even if they're tiny on the order of three or four millimeters, and that's usually not a good idea. Once your nodule's over a centimeter in general, uh, we would recommend a needle biopsy. A needle biopsy is usually done under ultrasound guidance, which means the ultrasound is held in one hand and the needle in the other, and after appropriately positioning the patient and injecting some numbing medicine into the neck skin, the needle is passed directly into the nodule so we know exactly where the needle is and where it's sucking some cells out. And those cells are sucked into a syringe, usually done a few times, so maybe three or four passes, and then that's given right over to a pathologist. 
The pathologist is the physician whose expertise is looking under the microscope and studying those cells and giving us a report back uh, so that the physician, like myself, can talk to the patient and advise them on what's going on in the thyroid nodule. Now this is where things can sometimes get a little bit tricky, and I know a lot of folks want to talk about the Bethesda classification. The Bethesda classification is the way the pathologists talk to the doctors and the physicians can talk to the patients about the results of the needle biopsy. The Bethesda classification is really a way for us to all be talking at the same level and the same language. And ultimately, it gives us an understanding of the risk that a nodule can be cancer. The Bethesda classification includes one, two, three, four, five, and six. Bethesda number six is cancer. It's usually definitive and the predictive value, meaning it's 99% reliable. If the report comes back papillary thyroid cancer, then in 99% of instances, it will turn out to be a papillary thyroid cancer. On the other hand, we sometimes can get some other needle biopsies that are sometimes a bit more confusing. For instance, category five says suspicious for papillary thyroid cancer or suspicious for cancer. And in those situations, about 50 to 75% of those patients will turn out to have thyroid cancer. That's not 100%, but it's a, it's a pretty strong majority. And uh, so in those situations, typically a surgery is recommended and the extent of surgery, meaning do we recommend a half thyroidectomy or a total thyroidectomy is where the conversation turns to next. Category four is one of the most complicated categories um, and it's typically referred to as follicular neoplasm. What does that mean, follicular neoplasm? Follicular neoplasm basically means that they're seeing a lot of copies of the same type of cell, a follicular cell, and neoplasm means that it's a growth, it's a tumor. Overall, about 25% of these turn out to be cancer and about 75% of them turn out to not be cancer. Uh, and that leads to a lot of consternation. People get worried, well, what do I do with this 25% risk of cancer? And we're gonna talk about that in a moment in terms of how we help patients make the best decision about this follicular neoplasm situation. Category three is atypia, sometimes also called atypical cells of undetermined significance or follicular lesion of undetermined significance. And category three means that they see some atypical features in these cells from the needle biopsy, um, but they can't say for sure if it's cancer or not. It's another one of these indeterminate categories, just like category four. And category three in general means that there's about a 15% risk of cancer, or one in six. So that's category three and four, where we have kind of an indeterminate pathology, either category three, 15%, or category four, 25% risk of cancer. And we're gonna come back to these indeterminate pathologies in a moment. Category two is benign. And usually when the pathologist says this is a benign or benign adenomatoid nodule, it's quite predicted that it is indeed benign. And the patient can sit back and rest and say, okay, I have a thyroid nodule, but it's benign. Now, some benign thyroid nodules may still warrant treatment, especially if they're causing some compression on swallowing or breathing, or if they get very large, what we call maybe a goiter in some situations. And finally, category one is an insufficient biopsy. It means there's not enough cells. Sometimes this is expected. If you have a pure cyst of the thyroid, you might not get many cells in the specimen. And so the pathologist cells says there's not enough cells here, um, and uh, so we cannot render a diagnosis through the microscope. In some situations, that means to repeat the biopsy unless the patient quite clearly has a cyst, in which case we kind of can tell that the pathologist is gonna call it a category one. Those are the six categories of needle biopsy. And when we get that data back, we have to take a lot into account when we talk to the patient. And this is why it's so important to get in front of a professional thyroid physician, whether it's a thyroid surgeon like myself, uh, an ENT or endocrine surgeon, or an endocrinologist. These are the types of doctors that can best counsel you on the next steps uh, based on the needle biopsy. But the needle biopsy alone is not the whole story. We have to also know 
your thyroid blood levels. We have to also know your family history and your personal history. Uh, what other medical problems you have, what other ongoing medical conditions you have. Um, and then we have to know a little bit about how you feel about the medical condition. In general, most thyroid cancers are, cancers are called papillary thyroid cancers, and papillary thyroid cancers in general, relative to other cancers of the body, are relatively less aggressive. Now, what does this mean? We're still using the C word, cancer. Thyroid cancer it can be a very serious cancer, but in general, papillary thyroid cancer, if caught early, is highly treatable, and the mortality rate, or the risk of dying, is very, very low. In most patients who have thyroid cancer, the treatment is surgery, and in some instances, also a dose of radioactive iodine, which comes usually after the surgery by a few weeks to months. But let's take a step back towards those needle biopsy reports. Uh, let's go back to those indeterminate needle biopsies, category three and four, the atypia or the follicular lesion. This is where a lot of patients have questions and hopefully this video can help you get some more information about how to proceed. In some situations, it may make sense to go directly to surgery. If there's other things seen on the ultrasound that make it very suspicious to cancer, let's say an enlarged lymph node, or maybe the ultrasound characteristics are very, very concerning for cancer, then even with a category three or four Bethesda needle biopsy, we might counsel a patient to surgery. On the other hand, we do have some other good options with category three and four needle biopsies. In category three in particular, we can offer the patient a period of time to monitor the nodule for size. We can also recommend, an, a per, after a period of a few months, to repeat the needle biopsy. Typically, if we repeat the needle biopsy and it comes back atypical twice, we probably will recommend at least removing half of the thyroid gland. With follicular neoplasm, we're a little bit more inclined to recommend removing half of the thyroid gland at a minimum in order to find out for sure what it is. And when I say find out for sure what it is, when we take something out in surgery, the pathology goes again to the pathologist, the specimen, the, the tissue that's removed, and in that situation, they can make a definitive diagnosis, a final diagnosis on whether or not it is cancer or not. So it's often about a week after surgery when patients finally find out if it is a cancer or not. We have other options with this indeterminate category three and category four. Sometimes we can do what's called molecular testing, which is another needle biopsy sent to a company where they look at all the uh, pr expression profiles of the proteins inside the needle biopsy and try to look for patterns that might suggest that it is more likely to be benign or more likely to be cancer. And sometimes that helps patients further figure out if their nodule is concerning or not. None of these tests are 100%. And again, we always have to take into account the overall patient condition, the other aspects of the examination of the neck, other symptoms, the patient's thyroid blood levels, their family history and their personal health history in order to make a plan for the patient about whether to monitor the thyroid nodule, repeat a needle biopsy it, or recommend the surgery. When it comes to surgery in thyroid nodules, uh, it really depends on, again, the needle biopsy so we can recommend the appropriate extent of surgery. It also depends on what type of thyroid cancer. We haven't really spoken yet about all the different types of thyroid cancer. In general, the vast majority of thyroid cancers are what are called papillary thyroid cancer. And papillary is a feature of uh, the, the, under the microscope, what the uh, cells look like in terms of how they're organized. Papillary thyroid cancers are the most common thyroid cancers, followed by follicular thyroid cancers, which are more rare, but are also seen and often can behave like papillary thyroid cancers. Finally, there's two other categories of thyroid cancer that are common. The medullary thyroid cancer, which is often genetic and inherited. And then finally, the very rare and very aggressive anaplastic thyroid cancer, which is a very rare thyroid cancer, usually seen in the elderly and usually very aggressive. So it's important if you do get diagnosed with thyroid cancer to find out exactly what type of thyroid cancer you have. Get a copy of that pathology report Make sure to look at it with your physician and make sure you understand what type of thyroid cancer you have. 
Assuming you have a diagnosis of thyroid cancer, it's also important to have appropriate staging. Staging for thyroid cancer really means knowing as much as you can about the thyroid cancer before going in, before the surgery. And usually an ultrasound is enough uh, and will suffice to tell us everything we need to know about the thyroid cancer, especially in regards to the extensive lymph node involvement. Your first surgery ought to be, in most situations, your last surgery for thyroid cancer, meaning that if you're having an operation for what is a known thyroid cancer, the surgeon should be able to know before surgery a good deal about the extent of the lymph node spread, and he or she should plan the surgery to include the areas where lymph nodes uh, can and have already spread to make sure to remove those. That's very, very important. It's important to find a thyroid surgeon who does at least 40 thyroid surgeries a year, and no one should be embarrassed to ask their surgeon how often they do thyroid surgery. Thyroid surgery has some tricky points to it, including nerves that control the vocal cords and help in swallowing, and also other glands in the area, like the parathyroid glands, that have to be preserved in order to maintain calcium function. So in summary today, we've talked about the workup of a thyroid nodule, and we've talked a little bit about blood testing, an ultrasound, somebody who can take a good history and physical examination, usually an endocrinologist or somebody who regularly does thyroid surgery. We've talked about ultrasound and also needle biopsy. We've talked a little bit about needle biopsies and how that information is conveyed back to the patient, and especially when it comes to those category three and four Bethesdas, how we talk about indeterminate pathologies and what are the next appropriate steps. There's no one right answer for everybody. Every case is different and it's important to sit down with your physician and talk about the ultrasound, talk about your blood test results, and talk about your needle biopsy results in order to make a good plan. Thank you for uh, joining us today uh, for this uh, short video clip about thyroid nodules. My name is Dr. Ron Carney here at UT Houston McGovern School of Medicine.